If you're looking for a unique pet that doesn't require special heating, lighting, or much cleaning, look no further than the Praying Mantis. Praying mantises aren't a very long-lived pet. It takes about four to six months for a juvenile to reach adulthood, and they live around three to eight months more after that. Females typically live longer than males, and usually smaller species don't quite live as long as larger species of mantises. Some mantises only grow to about an inch long, and those are the shorter-lived species, whereas others can grow up to four inches long, and unlike dogs, where larger species don't live quite as long, those are the longer-lived species in the mantis world. There are all sorts of different types that you can keep as pets. Some are easier to find than others, some are easier to take care of than others. These two are Arizona mantises. Here's, yeah, where they are Carolinas for a second. These two are Arizona mantises, but my favorite species, I guess, would either be the orchid mantis, which is beautiful but expensive, or the Philocrania paradoxa, which is the scientific name for the ghost mantis. Ghost mantises like this one look like dead leaves, so it's perfect cryptic coloration, great camouflage, and the way they sway back and forth to try to look like a leaf kind of swaying in the wind is just so bizarre. They're like raising little alien insects, but really, really neat pets. Look at you go. There's not even a breeze on you. One thing you may have already heard about praying mantises is that they are cannibalistic. Some species, more so than others, ghosts are one that can sometimes be kept communally, but to be on the safe side, we recommend housing each bug in its own individual enclosure. Those enclosures should be around three times the length of the insect's body and about two times their width. This should give them adequate space to be able to molt properly, since when these insects molt, they hang upside down and they literally slide out of their old, old skin or their exoskeleton and they leave it behind. So if their enclosure isn't deep enough, they're gonna hit themselves and then molt improperly. And molting is the number one reason why these guys die is just because they're not able to do it properly. As the mantis grows, it sheds its skin and becomes a larger instar is what we call it. So when they first hatch from their uthaca or egg case, they are a first instar or L1 baby mantis. As they shed or after they shed that first time, they are then a second instar or an L2. This goes on and on until they reach about LH or eighth instar when they become adults. You do not want to house a small baby mantis in a huge adult enclosure though, because then they're not going to be able to easily find and hunt their prey items, which consists of live food only. We'll get into that a little bit later. So we recommend for babies or nymphs, just keep them in a small little cup. This is actually a beta cup or beta cup if you want to say it um, technically correct from a pet store. They always usually have extras of these so we just talk to the employees and get a few and uh, one baby per cup works really well. But the plastic cup here, or the plastic lid rather, is kind of hard for them to hang on to while they are molting. So to help them get a better grip, we find that if you use a square of toilet paper underneath the lid, then that gives them a little bit of a grip to hang from. To aid in ventilation, because you don't want it to be stagnant air in there and they need ventilation to breathe, of course, uh, you can actually pop out the lid, uh, the middle of this lid, and then the uh, paper towel will provide a good barrier so that they can't get out and their bugs can't crawl out, but air can still come in. As the mantis grows, you can increase their enclosure size to one of these larger cups like this, or if you have a large species of mantis, you can even use something as big as like a pretzel or like a cheese ball container. These work excellent for the adult larger species of praying mantises. All right, now you've got your empty cup or empty container. What do you put inside? The substrate can be one of various things actually. There's a few different types that'll work. A lot of people find success in paper towels, cocoa husk or eco earth and sphagnum moss basically anything that retains humidity. You want high humidity for praying mantises to allow them to shed. If it's too dry, they're going to get stuck in their old skin and that's when they start losing limbs or they just die during the shedding process. So anything that holds in moisture and slowly releases it over time works really well. We personally really like for babies to use paper towels because it's easy to clean out and the white paper towels with like a dark bug crawling around on it will make the prey item easy for the mantis to find. For bigger mantises, you can use something like Eco Earth, works really, really well. 
And then as the mantis goes to the bathroom and creates waste, or if fungus starts to grow, because I mean, any environment that has high humidity levels is probably gonna start growing mold or funguses, just throw in some springtails in the bedding and they will eat it themselves and they will kind of clean the environment on their own and you won't have to clean anything. Springtails are a very small insect that are used in like bioactive enclosures. And if you want, you can use something even a little bit bigger than springtails. You can use isopods and they'll break down feces uh, as well, but they don't tackle the funguses or bacteria that may start developing in the substrate as well as springtails do. So we just recommend and we just throw in some springtails in each of their enclosures. Also inside of the enclosure, you want to provide some sort of sticks or things for the bugs to crawl on. Honestly though, they spend like 99% of their time flipped upside down, hanging on the lid, which is why it's so essential to have some sort of paper product or something with traction to allow the bug to actually hang on to it easily because they just like hanging upside down from the lid. Brand new baby mantises that have just hatched can usually be kept together until they shed their first time and therefore become second instars. But once they're an L2 or a second instar, that's when they start to become cannibalistic, so that's when it's very essential to separate them individually. When it comes to feeding your praying mantis, they will only eat live insects. I think they like the movement, it catches their eye, and then they're able to catch it. Uh, for the size of the insect, there's no really good rule of thumb like there are for like there is for snakes or lizards. Instead, you just have to look at their current size and therefore the size of their forelegs and what would be an appropriate insect that would be comfortable for them to hang on to. If the insect is too large, they usually get scared of it and run away, but they also do that when they're just not hungry. They often will not eat a couple days before they molt, so if you add a cricket into a large praying mantis enclosure that isn't quite an adult and it doesn't want to eat it, don't leave the cricket in there because if the mantis does want to molt and it sheds its skin and it has that new soft skin, uh, the cricket might actually start chewing on the mantis and kill it. So if your mantis doesn't want to eat a larger insect that is the right size for it, take it out and try again later. Baby praying mantises are usually only large enough to eat fruit flies. Some species are so small as nymphs that they can only eat springtails. But for the most part, the ones that you'll see more commonly available in the pet trade are going to at least be big enough for fruit flies. There are two commonly found uh, fruit flies in the pet trade and they are typically bred to be flightless fruit flies. So they are not gonna fly around your house. They are kept in a culture. Those two species are Drosophilia melanogaster, which is the smaller variety of the fruit fly and Drosophilia hydei, which is the larger one. As you can imagine, baby mantises are going to eat the smaller melanogasters, and slightly larger ones will eventually upgrade to the hydeis. After the larger hydei fruit flies, then they are typically big enough for pinhead crickets or very small dubia roaches, and then you just increase the size of the crickets or roaches to match the size of the, the, the mantis and what it can handle. You do not want to feed your mantis every day though, unless it's a little baby. Babies you can feed once a day, but that's actually detrimental to their health if you feed an adult or even a sub-adult every day. As they age, you want to cut back how often you feed them to once every day as babies to once every four days as adults. You can usually look at their abdomen, and if their abdomen seems pretty deflated, they're probably ready for a meal, but if it's really large and engorged still from its previous meal, give it a couple more days. Let's touch again on humidity in their enclosures because it is so important to have high humidity in there for when they're ready to molt because the one time they have low humidity will be the time they decide to molt. So make sure you mist their enclosure once a day to keep their substrate moist and then throughout the day it will slowly release the moisture into the air around it. Again, because of high humidity, if you start seeing funguses or mold developing, remove that right away, clean the enclosure, not with any chemicals at all because they can be sensitive to that. Just use hot water to clean their enclosure. And really, to prevent mold buildup, I highly recommend adding springtails to the substrate. Springtails can commonly be found at reptile specialty stores, reptile expos, and you can even find them online. If you're trying to figure out whether your mantis is a boy or a girl, just know that you can't tell what sex it is until it is at its fifth in star or until it's L5 or older. At that age, they are big enough to count the segments in their abdomen. All true insects have three main body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. There is an adorable kid song 
that covers these three. I'll try to find a link to it and put it right here, but the abdomen is the largest part of the insect on the end of its body, and that contains the segments that you have to count to sex the mantis. Females, which again, when they are L5 or above, will have six abdominal segments, whereas males will have eight of these segments. You can sex adults pretty easily just by giving them a quick glance without even counting their abdominal segments. Males have generally much slimmer bodies and long wings that go past the end of their abdomen, whereas females have kind of shorter, stockier bodies which with much shorter wings as well. Also, typically females have a wider thorax, which is the middle midsection of their body, and males usually have a slender thorax, but that's what gives them their overall more slender shape, so there's no surprise there. Males will also tend to be a little bit smaller and they grow slower than females do. But again, that could just be an individual female not eating a whole lot and therefore growing slower. So again, you want to look at the other conditions like their body segments and their wings to know for sure. If you're looking for a great starter species of the praying mantis, I recommend either an Arizona like these two or a Carolina mantis or a Chinese mantis. Those three are, three are very hardy species, you know, all things considered. Uh, but keep in mind that even with the most perfect conditions, some mantises just, they just die. I mean, they are bugs after all, so don't, you know, blame yourself too much if you know the conditions are right and your bug just dies out of the blue. Usually they'll pass away because of uh, improper molts and that could be a husbandry issue or could just be the insect and bad luck. Some people consider it a challenge to raise a baby nymph praying mantis all the way to adulthood, but it's best to get a baby that's already established and at least L4 or so, like this one's an L4, and then they have a much higher chance of survival into adulthood. Typically breeders don't sell them though unless they are at least L2 or above. Not many of them are sold at L1 or fresh babies because that's when you have the highest chance of them dying during that first shed. That's pretty much mantises in a nutshell. Uh, we're not going to cover breeding in this episode because we're still trying to get the knack of that ourselves. We have our pair of Arizona mantises here. This is the male and we've got the female over here. When she molts and becomes an adult, we are going to try to pair them up and produce our own babies. Uh, but this little ghost is just going to be our pet because I love her. No, it's a boy, isn't it? We had to get him because his name was Edna. Like Ed. Yep. <laughs> Edna Mode. But that pretty much covers the basics and what you need to know to properly take care of a healthy, happy praying mantis. Now, of course, let me know which one is your favorite, the Arizona mantis or the ghost mantis. Because if I included orchid mantises in the mix, everyone would choose orchid, I'm sure. So choose between these two. Let me know which one's your favorite and we'll see you next time. No, you're not gonna go over to the other bug. Go right back in there. We don't need you guys eating each other. In fact, you can look that way. You know what? You too. You can also face this way so you're not tempted to eat the ghost. Head, thorax, abdomen, abdomen. That one. She's oh, she's looking, looking at, completely him. at him. Like, oh, oh fool. Oh, man. What? What is she doing? Oh, shoot. Cheyenne's getting into the bugs. Hang on. Awesome. Cheyenne. Hey. That's good bee footage. Or bloopers. It's not technically correct to call them mantises. Some people do. A lot of people call them mantises. Or mantids. See, when I call them mantids, I get corrected and they're like, no, you should call it mantises. And I'm like, you can call them either one. Tomato, tomato. I'm looking it up. Okay. It's both. Oxford Dictionary suggests mantis or mantises. Oh, uh, so not mantids? It looks like mantids are also accepted. Yes, they're both accepted. Yeah, they're both accepted. Yeah, I'm going to redo the ending with a couple in my hands. But that pretty much covers the basics and what you need to know to properly take care of a healthy, happy, well, that's right, males can fly, haha, <laughs> he's not well, food. Fall style. Yeah, males, males can fly, females can't fly, males are able to, that's why they have such long wings, because they find the females by being able to fly to them, whereas females just kind of have to wait for the males to arrive. But I don't want you flying on the ghost and eating him, you can just go back there. <laughs>